Let's bring in Jeff Colson, a meteorologist with Environment Canada. Jeff, thanks for taking some time for us. Uh, what are we expecting in Alberta? Yeah, uh, really not much in the way of good news, unfortunately, for the, the hardest hit areas in uh, central and, and northern Alberta and uh, also parts of central and, and northern Saskatchewan. In fact, uh, we'll be tracking a cold front later today expected to move through northern Alberta. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot in the way of precipitation with it, but it could kick off some lightning activity, which is exactly what they don't want and could start some new fires. And then that same cold front sweeping through Alberta today is going to move through uh, central and northern Saskatchewan tomorrow. And again, the same concerns, not a lot in the way of shower activity, but there could be some dry lightning associated with it. Yeah, how, how can that affect wildfires, just sort of in layman's terms? And, you know, when you, when you talk about dry, hot and, you know, windy, Jeff, conditions. Yeah, exactly right. And, and when we're adding already these conditions uh, very bad, uh, when we're adding to it lightning occurring without any real precipitation, you're talking about the possibility of uh, additional fires igniting uh, from those lightning strikes on the ground. And as you mentioned, the wind will shift as well uh, as that cold front goes through uh, later today in Alberta, uh, tomorrow for Saskatchewan. And what that could mean is uh, currently a lot of the concerns with the smoke has stayed more into uh, central and northern Alberta, uh, central Saskatchewan. Uh, we may see that wind shift in the coming days bring that smoke further south uh, towards Calgary. Uh, and then by Wednesday, further south into the areas of southern Saskatchewan. Abnormal for this time of year? Uh, incredibly abnormal for this time of year. You've talked about the amount of records being broken uh, temperature-wise. Uh, we look at the number of hectares that have been burned so far, uh, well above uh, any kind of long-term average for this time of year. I know that in British Columbia, temperature records were also broken, Jeff, over the weekend. Uh, exactly right. And we've been seeing that uh, over the last few days, uh, a number of locations right across British Columbia, seeing those records being broken and also parts of northeastern British Columbia being impacted by the fire activity as well uh, with special air quality statements in effect for some of those areas. Yeah, we're looking at Lytton, of course, that's the village that pretty much burnt to the ground uh, not that long ago. We saw a record of 34.1. Again, these temperatures are pretty stunning to look at, Jeff, aren't they? Well above normal for, for this time of year, in, in many cases, uh, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius warmer than the, uh, the long-term average for this time of year. Uh, and the weather pattern itself, while it looks like, as you mentioned, at least for Alberta and Saskatchewan, with that cold front going through, uh, a little bit of relief for the temperatures. We're still expecting temperatures this week in Alberta and Saskatchewan to be warmer than normal, uh, but not to the levels that we've seen over the last few days. But then unfortunately, the longer range forecast Friday and into the coming weekend sees those temperatures shooting right back up in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Jeff Colson with Environment Canada. Thanks for taking some time for CTV News. Jeff, great to have you part of our coverage today. Thanks for having me.